Well, we certainly had more than enough time to talk about this show, haven't we? We get to look at a little more today for you know the Rings of Power, this new Lord of the Rings series that, as much as I'm sure many of us didn't wish this was the overall response, it does stand in infamy. Largely, that's self-inflicted, it seems. Now, to state, you know, I, I've spoken extensively about this show in the past in terms of my, my current feelings on it, based on everything we've heard. I will, you know, refer, I'll re- repeat myself in saying that I am a Lord of the Rings fan, although my path of entrance to this franchise is very different from most people, and that I haven't read the books yet, I'm working on it. I came into the Lord of the Rings world through the video game universe, and that's what endeared me to the films, right? I started playing uh, with uh, Lego Lord of the Rings, and that's what immediately brought me in, because that game was just so fantastic. It was my favorite Lego game overall. And from there, you know, of course, I've played ever Middle Earth games, and that's only deepened my appreciation of the franchise. But I've seen the films, the extended versions, including as well the Hobbit series, and I absolutely just enjoy this world of Middle Earth. I'm, I'm invested, you know, in the cinematic adaptation of it, that the idea of a, a, an Amazon series, you know, Amazon has the money to spend, Right? You think, okay, Lord of the Rings, the films are great. Let's see what Amazon's got. Well, in the months since, we've learned a lot about not even as much the project, but the spirit behind it, you know, from the creators and the people involved. And that has said a lot, uh, you know, about the series, even beyond just what we've seen thus far, right? It's largely not even the show itself at, at present. I've heard things, I've seen things, but um, the show itself, I don't think, has even garnered as much infamy on its own trailers yet, at least from what I've seen currently, as all the drama from perhaps certain associated press outlets, the one ring you come to mind, of like wannabe access journalists, as they're called. It's unfortunate that the series perhaps is not necessarily the top tier of what you would expect based upon the reverence given to the film. I mean, the films, again, are award-winning, they're classic, um, and this show could have been, too. It's a disappointment for me, right, that you see a show like this and you're like, you had all the potential in the world to be great if you just stuck to the vision of the lore, which fans, at least from what I've seen, take very seriously. Now, I'll also state, as I've said previously, I don't think I deserve the right to call myself a Tolkien purist in that it suggests that I have a deep knowledge of the books. I don't. As I stated, I haven't read the books yet. It's a scheduling reason. And plus, I got so much stuff to read these days, it's just hard to schedule everything appropriately. But I'm a Tolkien purist in spirit. I don't want to see works changed if it disrupts um, what the creator, especially for a creation being released posthumously, um, I I don't want to see a project release that is dis. Uh, satisfying to the author's vision. And I'll tell you, the ghost of the fact that this is releasing on the anniversary of Tolkien's death says a lot, right? And from what we know about the series in regard to certain revisions made and the spirit of, you know, the changes behind the show, not even changes that are made on behalf of the story or in service to Tolkien, but changes that are made to marry this film to, as I've kind of, you know, worded, extrinsic sensibilities. It's sad to me this couldn't be better. Right? But the wounds that this series is suffering from are largely all self-inflicted. So, But I figured, you know, again, I'll still cover the trailers. I mean, I'm still probably going to end up, I think most of us are going to at least watch an episode or two, even if we don't continue to engage with it. I've pulled together two. At least some of you would say this isn't necessary, but sometimes you'll see, you know, again, I like to get the widest perspective possible. So I'm going to pull up both the sneak peek and the main teaser for this. And the main teaser is substantially longer, but sometimes you'll see maybe a shot or two that's featured in a sneak peek that is not revealed in a teaser. And I figured to best judge this series, we should get the full perspective possible. So I'm going to start with the sneak peek, and then we'll move into the the, uh, main teaser straight away, maybe after I give some preliminary thoughts based on what we see here in this minute-long ad. It's a very scenic depiction of Lord of the Rings. Voices are strange. Pretty shots. Some good CGI work. That's pretty. I mean, they're tempting you with the visual imagery. As I think they probably are most people. Even though it is like green screen intensive. 
There's an end. I saw that. That was mostly just like, again, a, a tour of Middle Earth. It was pretty. Um, but again, looks only get you so far. If it lacks in substance, right? This could be the prettiest series in the world, right? Amazon has spent all of its money being like, oh, we've created the Lord of the Rings from a visual standpoint. Well, it doesn't mean anything if your story is lacking. And from what we know, there are some serious uh, points of contention to be made, at least with what Amazon has created for this first season of, what, five? I think is what they slated for. <sighs> we'll see. Anyway, that was the main teaser, right? Looks good. Deceitfully good. But again, I know the spirit behind some of the changes being made. And I'm like, well... <sighs> again... Looks only get you so far, and all the flack you're getting is deserved. The point to be made, if you don't make a series that fits the work of the offer, as written, especially given the fact that the offer's now passed away, and so has his son, and you're trying to change and uh, disrupt the overall vision of the show, er, of the series as written by the offer and envisioned by him posthumously... It's not a grievance I think most people will forget, and most people haven't, at the very least from what I've seen in terms of public response with Lord of the Rings uh, teasers from Amazon. All right, here we go. There was a time when the world was so young. There had not yet been a sunrise. But even then... Again, it's very scenic. That's pretty. Light. have forests to protect. Dwarfs their mines. Mend their fields of grain. But we Harfoots have each other. For I must now wander this wandering day. We're safe. I like the score. You have four. Yeah, I will like the score there at the very least. That high vocalization, it's uh has a European feeling. The question now is where? It is over. You have not seen what I've seen. I have seen my share. You have not seen. What I have seen. Darkness will march over the face of the earth. It will be the end, not just of our people, but all peoples. It's really unfortunate, but again, the story has its issues. The past is with us all. The past. Because the series itself. We either move forward. Is temptingly we die with it. dreamlike in regard to reflecting Tolkien's work. And this score is really good, I think. Um, it didn't convince me at first, but as it went on. And I'll tell you why. Well, that's a whole lot of hype. Again, it's deceitfully pleasing because you sit there and you watch this and you're like, I mean, maybe some of you disagree, but I mean, the world of Tolkien, story-wise, this came across like, you know, almost every other fantasy epic that I've seen. I mean, for all the talk about, you know, Jeff Bezos wants his Game of Thrones. I mean, this is like, how many you know studios do this like Game of Thrones on uh, um, HBO? Netflix has The Witcher. Amazon now has Lord of the Rings, and you know other series as well. It just feels like again, it, it has that familiar fantasy energy, but it doesn't feel like it's unique to me. Um, other than again in the visual, the visual presentation is fine. Uh, it, it's very beautiful, 
But it's tempting that you're like, okay, well, I like what I'm seeing, but if it lacks in substance what Tolkien wrote, that says a lot. I like the score, though, to be honest with you, uh, especially towards the end when the vocalizations came in and certain uh, chords chosen. Very European energy. I... My playlist features a lot of like uh, um, European music, especially within the rock metal scene. Um, so stuff that has more of like an orchestral symphonic feel. There are certain bands that come to mind when I hear us. I'm like, oh, it sounds like some of your music. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just slightly. Um, so maybe I was a bit endeared on that. And plus, you know, the Lord of the Rings is of European construction, given Tolkien was uh, of European uh, uh, um, uh, birth. So again, I think the score fits, but. <sighs> I wish I had better things to say about it um, in terms of the story. I wish it could be fully, you know... I'll say this, just going through. Again, the world looks good, and there are certain shots of the characters that look... They're are, are beautifully staged. I like this one here of Galadriel, and I believe that's Elrond. Um, young Elrond. Looks nothing like Hugo Weaving, though. Um... This shot's pretty with the fire. There's this one, though, with the, the horses. They just stop at midstream. Um, those suits look... You know what those suits look like? They look like a bunch of, like, uh, um, uh, babies. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It looks like a bunch of babies on horseback. <laughs> Maybe some of you are like, oh, how dare you discredit some you know, piece of Tolkien lore. I'm like... These suits don't look good, though. They look horrible. <laughs> What's with the tights, too? Oh, that's not a good fit. Um, <laughs> Amazon, you could spend a little more money there on that. Uh, the ship lighting here, like with the sails, that's, that's gorgeous. Again, the environmental stuff, in terms of building Tolkien's world in, in, in a physical presentation, is gorgeous. This action shot of, I'm assuming, a warg, um, that was pretty, and the editing on that is, I, I think, serviceable. Is Gollum coming into the show, by the way? Because that looks like Gollum's hand. Um, it's visually striking. Maybe that's the idea. Like, oh, well, you know, our story has problems, and we know the fans are in the process of rioting on this, but we'll just bring people in, you know, because it looks good. It's not going to get you very far. I mean, again, I'm probably going to, well, we're all going to watch at least an episode to, you know, see this. Maybe I'm the person who watches and I'll be, you know, tempted, right, into, into liking it based upon, again, the way that it looks. But again, I can't ignore what's been stated about Lord of the Rings because fans have made this very clear at this point and they have every right to. If it doesn't match in, in tone and in seriousness of story and what Tolkien's envisioned in his writing especially given the fact that Tolkien has passed away and this is coming out on the anniversary of his death, that's not something they'll ever leave the show. It just won't. Anyway, what are your thoughts on Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power? I, I want to like it. I do. I've stated the visual imagery looks good, even if it's very CGI heavy. I'm just... I can't ignore the problems with the story, as expressed by the fans. I can't, y you can't separate the two here. Feel free to let me know what your thoughts are down below. Maybe you have an entirely different take. I'm open to whatever perspective I have to be. Please you know, be charitable to everybody in the, in the comments, because I know, you know, it, this... Lord of the Rings is unfortunately becoming, again, an ever-contentious franchise, right? That's just the way things roll these days. But, again... It's deserved on Amazon's part. Maybe can you spend money to make it look good, but uh, your substance has issues. And I hope going forward in the season for the sake of your show and your investment that maybe you work some of the problems out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you bounce, feel free to drop a like and comment, subscribe to this channel with a ding on the bell, and share this video with your friends. And consider checking out the description here. There you'll find links to my other channels, as well as addresses to my other social media accounts and ways you can help support my work if you feel so inclined. May God bless you, and looking forward to when our paths cross again.